everyone. I am Amita, co-founder of Nourish Talk, a platform for natural and holistic medicine. In our session today, we are going to talk about different foods that are good for digestive health as well as for diabetes. Presenting this topic is Dr. Pooja Kiran. She is from Boston. She has been educated in UK and India. She has over 10 years of experience uh, working as an Ayurvedic practitioner. Welcome, Dr. Pooja. Thank you very much, Amita. And hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this Q&A session today. We would be discussing the topic Yavagu. And uh, it, it is a delicious herbal gruel. And we would be discussing its uses benefits and methods of preparation and we would also emphasize on the concept of food as medicine great so let's um let's start with um food as medicine a concept and uh, if you could just tell your viewers sure so prevention is better than cure Ayurveda emphasizes on the preventative aspects as much as on the curative aspect of health and disease. This approach is important to understand the concept of food as medicine. Let us look at the term Dravya that you can see on the screen. Dravya is an Ayurvedic term which means all substances that occur naturally and that which can be consumed. And Ayurveda classifies Dravya into two main types. First is Ahara, which means food, and Aushada, which means medicine. Now, as we all know, food is uh, taste predominant and medicine is potency predominant. So while all medicines or medicinal preparations have a curative, curative aspect of disease, food, on the other hand, has preventative aspect of disease and aims to maintain health under normal circumstance, circumstances. Ayurveda prescribes specific diet patterns in healthy and diseased conditions, which are termed as Pathya. And ancient Ayurveda scholars mentioned several food preparations in conjunction with herbs, which have nutritional as well as therapeutic qualities with an aim to correct any imbalances in the body. And such food preparations were classified as Pathya Kalpana. And in today's terms, Pathya Kalpana can be classified under the category of nutraceuticals. And one such important Pathya Kalpana that we would be discussing in detail today is Yavagu. So that's very interesting. So it brings me to the topic that if you could talk about um, an Ayurvedic uh, food that is also good for diabetic people. Sure. So uh, let me enumerate a uh, in a categorized manner. First, let us look at uh, grains. So as per Ayurveda, uh, rice, especially red rice, is very good for uh, digestive health and diabetes also. Now, many people will think that rice has a lot of starch and it might not be good for diabetes. But uh, the, the starch in rice is resistant starch and has a lot of soluble fiber content and it's easy for consumption and it has low glycemic index. And that is why it is also specifically uh, recommended for diabetic people as well. So there are different kinds of nourishing rice like red rice, um, long grain rice and so, uh, a rice named Navara rice, which is a spe special kind of rice that is harvested within 60 day days of growing the crop. So these special kind of rices are very good uh, because they have nourishing as well as therapeutic qualities. And that is why they are one of the main contents used in Yavago. So uh, apart from rice, there's another grain that is specifically mentioned in Ayurveda for good health uh, that is called um, barley. Now, barley has very good fiber content and it is uh, it also has low glycemic index. So that's why it, its digestibility is easy. And it because of the high fiber content, it helps in bowel movements as well. In terms of uh, legumes, um, Ayurveda says one specific legume called uh, Masha, which is green gram. Uh, in Hindi, it is called Moong Dal as well. So this green gram is very good because it has superior quality protein in it, plant protein in it, and it has very good uh, nourishing properties and is easy to digest. 
and the combination of rice and this green gram is very good because it provides starch and proteins and it uh, when you eat such a preparation you feel fuller for a longer period of time so it satiates your hunger and you don't feel uh, uh, low in energy as well in terms of fruits and vegetables uh, almost all fruits and vegetables are um, uh, good for health uh, based on different requirements but uh, i would like to uh, point out two fruits mainly pomegranate and papaya now these are tropical fruits but they are easily available in usa as well and they are very good for digestive health because uh, the enzymes that they have and the, they are loaded with lots of minerals and vitamins and uh, they help in conditions like indigestion and because their sugar content is so low so even uh, diabetic people can easily take it without uh, thinking about spiking their sugar levels in the blood um in terms of vegetables uh, there is one vegetable named uh, drumstick vegetable which is uh, called sehjan in hindi and that has been specifically mentioned as a very good uh, uh, vegetable for digestive health and it can also be taken for diabetes uh, along with that uh, all green leafy, uh, green leafy vegetables are really good as well and in terms of spices i would specifically like to mention ginger and turmeric they are both uh, root vegetables they both uh, come under the same family of uh, vegetables and uh, as we all know ginger has a lot of uh, uh, importance in terms of ga gastrointestinal health and uh, because di diabetes has the root cause in um, digestive uh, health condition as well so ginger can actually help in both these conditions and turmeric again it ha it has very good uh, antibacterial and antimicrobial properties so um, it also helps in uh, all, major, majorly all kinds of diseases especially because it helps in boosting the immunity amitan so yes so i think uh, you wanted to mention about a particular ayurvedic recipe that you can tell your viewers today that also has some research and clinical significance so could you talk a little bit about um, a specific ayurvedic uh, food today sure so i would like to um, share one specific yavagu recipe which is called karkita ka kanni now the, uh, this is a, a preparation that is mainly made with red rice and as uh, i would later on explain how the yavagu preparation is done um th uh, the main ingredient is rice and it is cooked in herbal decoctions and some spices uh, and additives such as ghee and coconut milk are added to it so uh, this karkita ka kanni uh, the term karkita ka actually refers to the monsoon season in india and this is a uh, this monsoon season spans between july to august during which the weather is very hot and humid and is lashed with lot of rainfall so uh, what happens is during this time the vata aggravates a lot because of the kind of weather we have uh, there is a lot of wind and there is humidity and because of all this uh, disturbance the vata, the erratic nature of the, uh, vata causes the imbalance in pitta as well so what happens is vata is aggravated and that in in term aggravates the pitta uh, while kapha which is the third dosha that is in a diminished form so what happens is naturally the digestion is weak during this time you don't feel very hungry in fact you feel more thirsty um um and uh, many other conditions like infections allergies um uh, autoimmune disorders or even a lot of immunity problems and blood disorders like psoriasis and skin problems um and even uh, autoimmune disorders like arthritis etc flare up during this time only because of the erratic nature of vata and the imbalance of pitta in the body so this recipe the karkita ka kanni has been uh, advised by ayurvedic scholars which has uh, all these ingredients that actually help pacify vata and regulate the imbalance in pitta and at the same time increase the kapha content in the body to improve the energy to build the immune system or boost the immune system and detoxify the body and hydrate the body uh, which are all as part of the vedas that uh, is the karkita ka weather or the monsoon weather or the 
uh, hot and humid weather that we have during uh, the July to August uh, months. So, um, as you can all see in the slide, I have listed out the ingredients. The first and the main ingredients is, is red rice. Red rice is very easily available everywhere. It's basically unprocessed rice. It's dehusked, but the outer coating of the rice, which is a brown or reddish layer, is not removed. Now, um, not many people know that that is the coating. The coating is the most important par part of rice because it harbors all the important vitamins and minerals and even protein especially vitamin B so when the rice is polished that uh, uh, the reddish or brown coating is removed and with that goes a lot of proteins and a lot of vitamins and minerals so when you take red rice you're actually taking more nutritious rice as compared to polished white rice um, and red rice uh, by nature itself is more easily digestible so it helps in digestion as well. So that's why most of the Yavago preparations are mainly made with red rice. But uh, if red rice is not a pre preference, we can also use uh, other nourishing type of rice, rice like long grain rice. Then the second ingredient is ginger garlic paste. Of course, uh, as we all know, ginger is very good for digestion and garlic helps to pacify vata. And then there is um, the third ingredient is roasted and powdered uh, spices of uh, fenugreek seeds black pepper which is uh, um, you can take powdered black pepper long pepper long pepper is also available in the market as well bishop seeds which is called ajwain cumin seeds turmeric powder cardamom powder and esophotida so it's you can actually prepare this herb, uh, herbal mix by roasting all these seeds together and grinding it and keeping it in a airtight container and you only need uh, uh, around half a teaspoon of uh, this powder, uh, herbal mix to be added to the Yavago preparation. And the third ingredient is Sandhava, which is salt. But this is not table salt. You can either use uh, rock salt, which is usually advised. But if rock salt is not available, you can also use sea salt. And the fourth and the fifth ingredient is coconut milk and ghee. So um, ghee is uh, um, a very good um, uh, uh, ingredient because it pacifies pitta. So it helps to regulate the in imbalance in the pitta and coconut milk is cooling in nature. So it helps to pacify pitta as well, as well as it uh, adds to the taste of the uh, Yavagu recipe. So uh, it's very easy to prepare. Yavagu preparations have one specific method of preparation that is uh, in the proportion of one is to six. That means you have to cook one cup of rice in six cup of water specifically because that gives the proper uh, texture and uh, um, uh, quality of the yavaku. So please boil one cup of red rice uh, with six cups of water um, and then uh, separate, keep it separate and then in a, in a skillet add some ghee and saute all uh, the ingredients that is ginger garlic paste, the uh, herbal uh, spice mix and you can add a little bit of um, um, salt in it and then saute it and then mix this into the rice along with coconut milk and ghee and then cook it for another two minutes over the fire and it's all prepared and this uh, karkidaka kanji recipe can be taken uh, in uh, can be taken by uh, uh, healthy people as well as people who are suffering from digestive illnesses or diabetes Amita. Great. So uh, I think um, if you can just say the importance of the Yuvagu preparation, I think you've already mentioned quite a few, but just to um, have our viewers understand uh, how it can help with the, with the stimulating the stomach fire and other things. Sure. So Yuvagu preparation, as I mentioned, is mainly prepared with rice and different types of nourishing rice are used for that good digestive property. And a good quality Yavago should possess a semi-solid texture. It should neither be too concentrated nor too diluted. And it should be eaten fresh and warm and should not be eaten cold. And it should have a pleasant and palatable appearance. And the quantity of Yavago that is to be eaten by an individual depends as per the digestive capacity of the per person. If the person has low digest, uh, digestive fire or there is indigestion, then the person should eat small quantities of Yavagu more frequently during the day. Like for example, 
four to five, uh, six times during the day rather than having a big bowl of yavaho and if the person is having very good uh, digestive uh, capacity then they can eat it as a big uh, lunch or dinner as well that's great um so i think uh, what are the different types of yav- uh, yavagu um sure so um the different types uh, uh, as per ayurveda uh, there is a book called charaka samhita it's a classical textbook of ayurveda and that mentions 28 types of yavagu preparations which are disease specific so um i i have just uh, listed out a few out of the 28 types which i uh, thought was uh, useful uh, right now so uh, as you can see on the slide there, uh, there are uh, yavagu preparation for indigestion and colic pain there is uh, preparation for gas preparation for uh, infections preparations for uh, uh, toxins like anti toxic yavagu preparation preparation for uh, weight loss preparation for dryness excessive dryness in the body or excessive uh, th- uh, when you have morbid thirst or excessive thirst in the body and then there are uh, uh, there is a yavagu preparation for cough and breathing difficulties and then there is yavagu preparation for constipation uh uh for uh, yavagu preparation for throat diseases and even uh, yavagu preparation can be used as an aphrodisiac so um today i would like to specify three types of yavagu preparation which is uh, relevant in today's uh, pandemic situation and this can be really helpful and can be taken by everybody the first one is uh, number 3 which is uh, yavagu preparation for infections it is krimigni yavagu now uh, the ingredients in it is uh, vidanga which is a herbal seed and is very good for uh, all kind of infections in the gastrointestinal uh, tract in blood and in lymph so it it boosts the immunity as well it is antimicrobial and it is good for digestion then the second one is pippali mula which is the root of the uh, black pepper seed uh, or the long pepper uh, plant and then shigru like i uh, mentioned before shigru is drumstick vegetable that is also uh, easily available maricha is black pepper and buttermilk as we all know is uh, a drink mainly made by uh, yogurt and then uh, rock salt which means uh, uh, not the table salt but the rock salt so these uh, this combination of herbs uh, when mixed with the yavagu preparation of rice uh can, is very helpful for uh, treating and as a preventive method for infections any kind of infections in fact uh but more specifically for gastrointestinal infection for blood uh, for uh, infections in blood and for naturally build, building the immunity the second uh type of um um uh, yavagu preparation that i would like to mention is dashamula yavagu which is number 7 here uh this is specifically for cough and breathing difficulties like we all know with uh flu and even uh coronavirus uh, infections uh breathing difficulties and cough they are one of the main symptoms and dashamula yavagu can be easily uh made at home and uh can be taken for that dashamula is a a herb mix of 10 different types of ayurvedic herbs and that is also easily available in the market um in uh, herbal shops or even uh, uh, on other sites like amazon and banyan bot- botanicals etc so this can also be used very uh, and uh, as a preventative method and then the last one that i would like to mention is kanthya yavagu number 9 which is for throat diseases again uh, because uh, all these infections especially the upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract are uh, more pre- prevalent right now uh, so kanthya yavagu is also a very essential uh, very important uh, as a preventative uh, as well as a curative aspect of uh, controlling infections again the uh, uh, the ingredients are uh, very very easy it's uh, yava pip- uh, ghee pippali and amlaki so yava is actually barley barley and ghee and uh, um, gooseberry and black pepper Um, so yavagu in your opinion is, uh, is is really a prescription and ayurvedic prescription for different type of ailments um that's what it sounds like um so who yes. all can take uh, in your opinion yes 
So um, Yavago uh, has been uh, mentioned for preventative as well, that is in healthy people, as well as for people who suffer from various types of illnesses. So, um, uh, so people who are healthy can take it uh, as part of their daily diet or even like, uh, you know, uh, once in a while they can have it because it helps to keep them f uh, fit. And for patients suffering from illnesses, uh, it helps to cleanse their channels. The, the body becomes blocked with toxins and Yavagu preparation helps to cl cleanse these channels and that in turn helps to uh, bring down the, the, the diseases that they are suffering from. And specifically in patients who have undergone Panchakarma therapies. Panchakarma therapies are specialized detox treatments the, that uh, people undergo for various kinds of uh, uh, diseases and after each panchakarma therapy uh, ayurveda advocates this uh, yavagu preparation as a part of the uh, recuperation period of uh, time for them so when they are uh, when they have been given a detox therapy the energy levels are low and people generally feel very weak and they feel very dehydrated so uh, they cannot digest uh, heavy foods and they cannot digest all types of uh, uh, food that they generally eat so they have to be brought back to the normal diet by giving uh, easily digestible foods and yavagu preparation is one of the preparations that is advised for people after post panchkarma therapies and it serves as a very good uh, nutritious diet for people who are recuperating from long-term illnesses or even hospitalizations and post-surgery people who have had fever and after fever everybody knows the digestive capacity is very low and people feel really low in energy and there is a lot of fatigue and for postpartum mothers as well after delivery the body is really weak the body needs a lot of nourishment but then whatever food that they are eating should be easily digestible as well so in such conditions as well um, Yavagu preparation helps a lot then patients who cannot uh, uh, tolerate strong herbs are also advised Yavagu. So when these herbs are cooked in conjunction with um, uh, the rice, the, the strength of the, the herb, although the potency remains the same, uh, it, it becomes more palatable for patients to eat it. So it's easier for them to tolerate the strong herbs when it is prepared in this Yavagu preparation. Uh, the same goes with uh, children because children they are very fussy they wouldn't eat herbs they wouldn't eat spices and uh, making a, a yavagu preparation with uh, the required spices and herbs is easy for them to eat and uh, patients who are uh, who come under the old age category uh, we call it the geriatric patients and patients who are recumbent like for example patients who um, have undergone stroke and are paralyzed or are bedridden because of some reason uh, they cannot eat solid food and uh, yavagu preparation because of its consistency and because it can be easily digestible uh, it helps in those kinds of conditions um, and also uh, people who have dental issues etc so this is a great recipe for a lot of conditions basically Great, great, Dr. Pooja. And could you give us a simple recipe so that uh, our users can follow? Uh, yes, uh, I think we already talked about the Karkidaka Kanye Correct. recipe. So, yeah, so uh, this is just summarizing. I would say summarize the recipe um, for, for sure. our users. Sure, of course. So uh, the Karkidaka Kanyin uh, is a simple Yavagu recipe that can be taken by uh, healthy people as well as people who have uh, diabetes and uh, who have indigestion or low digestive capacity. So this uh, uh, recipe's main ingredient is red rice, but you can also take long grain rice as well if red rice is not available. The second ingredient is ginger garlic paste. Uh, you can either buy the ginger garlic paste or you can make it uh, make it as a paste with just ginger and garlic and then the third recipe is a mix of many uh, herbs or spices uh, i would like to uh, enumerate it as first one fenugreek seeds black pepper long pepper bishop seed which is ajwain cumin seeds turmeric cardamom and esophotida which is hingu and the third one is salt uh, best to take uh, rock salt or sea salt and then the fourth one is coconut milk and fifth one is ghee. 
So uh, once you have all these five ingredients, the, the, the way method to prepare this is you take one cup of rice and cook it in six cups of water and you keep it aside. Do not strain the, the liquid that remains after the rice is cooked because that makes gives it the consistency that it requires. Then in a, in a separate skillet, add a little bit of ghee and a salty ginger garlic paste and all these uh, powdered herbs together with a little bit of salt in it. And once uh, you saute this mix, you add the sauteed mix into the rice with a, a little bit of coconut milk as well. You can use a half cup to one cup of coconut milk depending on uh, uh, the taste that you like. Um, and then mix it nicely and cook it for another one or two minutes to uh, let the herbs mix with the rice. And then it is served hot. It can be uh, taken as lunch or dinner as a main uh, dish or it can be uh, had as a smaller dish with um, more frequently like two to three times if you're suffering from a certain illness. Uh, it's better to take it uh, in smaller quantities and more frequently during the day. Thank you so much for Dr. Pooja for, for, for giving us this recipe. Thank you so much viewers for watching. Uh, we will be posting this recipe um, in our Facebook channel. And uh, you know, please let us know if you have any questions or any comments or any feedback. Dr. Pooja is here available for, for giving you personalized consultations as well. Signing off now, this is Amita. And Dr. Pooja, if you want to say something before I sign off. Sure. Uh, thank you all for uh, attending this Q&A session. Um, if you have uh, any questions or if you want more information on your digestive health or diabetic uh, recipes, you can always uh, uh, contact me through Nourish Doc and I would be happy to give any kind of information that you need. Thank you.